Uh, the monitor guy has a similar task, just slightly different. He's in charge of placing, making sure everything gets in the right spot, and setting up the desk. Obviously, yellow, we're going to have help setting up the desk, unless it's really tiny. Um, hopefully, we'll have help running all the AC to all the amp racks. Uh, the front of house has amp racks or amplifiers, and the monitors also have separate amplifiers. Because if we have eight mixes or six mixes or four mixes of monitors, that's four amplifiers right there. So chances are it'll be in a separate amp rack. Want to place the monitor speakers? You can direct other people. Say, hey, take these two and put them center stage. This will be for lead vocalist. Take these two and put them up on that riser for the keyboard. Take these and put them up for the drummer, and so on. Um, so you you need assistance. Um, you're doing your job properly when you're doing a lot of directing and very little work. Believe it or not. Um, and then you want to run the speaker cables. If you're at the amplifier end and say, OK, speaker cable number one, run this to stage left speaker. You physically plug it into the amp, they will run it and physically plug it into the speaker. So you kind of work together. Like I said, when you're doing it, when you're doing it totally correctly, you're doing very little work and tons of directing. Then after the physical stuff that people can help you with is done, then you start patching your EQ rack. Because in a monitor system, you have a rack of six, four, eight, ten EQs or whatever for each one of the mixes you have. You have to wire that up. Then you have to patch the inputs to the amplifiers. And what that is is if mix one feeds the wedge speakers in the middle, personally I like to go left to right. You know, if you're behind the stage, I'll stage left will be one, you know, and the next one will be two, three, four. It's if that's if we have four mixes across the front. And then so on down the line. So it kind of matches up, you know. The guy over here is yelling at you, hey, turn this up. You don't have to go, um, was that one, two, or three, or four? You kind of know because it's all the way to the left or whatever. And again, that's that same thing I was telling you, how we always make sure left is left and right is right, and everything's try to make it symmetrical and even. It makes things a lot easier when you try to figure it out. After that, you test the signal to all the monitor speakers. You could take pink noise or music or whatever your choice is, just to make sure that you turn send pink noise to mix one, make sure that mix one speakers are working. You can even have somebody on stage, if you have two of them, make sure both speakers are working. Or make sure that when you send it to mix one, it's not coming up at the drum riser. Because nothing is worse than trying to dial something in and you're giving it to somebody else when it's supposed to be over here. So it's very, very important that you have everything in the right spot, and it's confirmed that it's in the right spot. Then after that, you EQ the monitor system, um, ringing it out, making sure it sounds good with the microphone that's in that mix. If you have the lead vocal might have a different speakers and a different microphone, you EQ that for that. You go over to the keyboard player, he might have a different microphone or different speakers. You EQ him to that one, and so on down the line. Sometimes guitar players and drummers or people that don't have a microphone, you don't really need to use the EQ at all. You just leave it flat. Or EQ out what you think is uh, just needed for taste, for sound purpose. The stage guy, there's... Uh, He'll run the stage AC. All band gear needs AC, and they look to the PA guys for that AC, you know, because there's no wall outlets. You just can't run wall outlets. So we, we supply the stage AC. Um, he will also direct the people to uh, set up the microphone stands. Some companies, the mic stands are already pre-built. You know, the round bases are, are still screwed on and when whatnot. And some companies, you unscrew the round bases and you put them in a milk crate or whatever and you, you separate them all out. Well, even if they're tripod stands or whatever, you still have to unfold them and build them according to how many you think you might need. It could easily be 24 or so mic stands that you need to have people help you build up. And it, how long does it take to set up 24 mic stands? Even if it takes you five minutes, that's five minutes of time that you really need back to yourself to, to do other tasks where if you can get one or two people to help you and you only spend one minute with them, that gives you four minutes. And believe me, <laughs> if you were on tour, you learn to trim every minute off that you can um, by designated, you know, if I can get one guy to do three minutes of my five minutes of work, you're ahead of the game. 
And then after that, you make up an input list uh, with the front of house tech. You got that list? And what that is, is that's all of the inputs that are going to be used for this particular band. And Roy has this great input list that he got off the Internet from uh, Simon and Garfunkel, or just one of them. And uh, this, this would be the input list that he would pass out. <laughs> Well, what it does is it, it shows you what the physical list is. You know, each one of the drums and each one of the guitars, each one of the keyboards and whatnot. And what normally happens is you'll make that list with the front of house tech. The monitor guy will just take whatever you give him. Um, but the fr it's important that the front of house guy and the stage guy gets together and makes that input list. And the reason why it's important for the stage guy to know is because he'll have to make sure that he gets the microphones into the right sub boxes and whatnot. So it's, it's helpful for them to work together. Uh, then you place the mic stands. And you can have the stage hands help you place mic stands. You'll take a pair and somebody else takes another pair with you. And as you're setting two of them up, somebody else is help, helping you set two more up. Again, you just try to be as efficient as possible. For starters, these guys are getting paid. You don't want them to get paid to sit around and do nothing. And they're getting paid to work. That's just part of their job. You don't work them to death, but you work with them. Like I said, if you're just standing there and going, okay, guys, you're just being so lazy. Somebody work already. You know, that's, you're going to get a bad attitude, and they're not even going to work for you. But if you grab a pair and walk with them, and, you know, you do one-third or one-fourth of the work, Working with them, it's, uh, everybody works really well that way. After you place the mic stands, then you place the microphones. You, some people place the microphones on the stands before they're taken out. And that kind of works. You just have to be careful if they're really expensive or whatnot. And what that does is that allows you, as this placing the microphones in red, you know, you're in charge of the microphones. They're yours. You know, even if somebody else owns them, you're in charge of them. And if you, you have the stagehands help you with the mic stands, they're kind of out of your control for a while. You know, they could fall off the stands, they could, you know, bump them, they could drop the stands. So I personally like to place the microphones on the stands myself. Running mic cables can be a dual task where you can have them assist you. You can stand at the one end, the box end or whatever, and say, hey, run this and pass them back and forth. It's nice to have help with that. At this point of the game, when you're placing microphones and running mic cables, you probably only need one guy to help you. Um, and then you also can assist the monitor guy with ringing out the monitor system. Sometimes the monitor engineer himself will be at the microphone describing the frequencies that he wants turned up or down on the EQ. And the, monitor, and the stage tech will have to have enough know-how that when he says bring down 315, or 3K5 or whatever, 3K15, he knows exactly which one, which EQ to go to, you know, mix three, one, two, three, turn down 500 hertz. You know, the, the stage tech should at least have that much know-how. He doesn't really have to know what frequency it was that fed back, but if he does, it actually helps because he can help out the guy. But you have to at least know what the components are, and then you have to go to the mixing board and turn it up or down on mix one, two, or three, or four, or five, or six. So those are the three typical jobs, uh, the front of house guy, monitor guy, and stage guy. And these are pretty much their tasks for the first half of the day, um, the setup. And you would think that you know their show tasks are pretty obvious. Show tasks would be front of house guy mixes the sound or hands it over to the band engineer to mix, making sure everything is properly working. Same thing with the monitor guy. Chances are the monitor guy will mix the sound for the bands. Because uh, depending on the size of the tour, uh, they will bring a front of house guy, but they won't bring a monitor guy. If it's a huge tour, they will. If it's a medium-sized tour, sometimes they don't. So the monitor guy typically will run sound for all the bands or whatever, which is a good thing because sometimes uh, they grease your pockets, you know, for running sound for you. So you get 10, 15, 25 bucks a band, you can make some money, which is kind of cool.